So in this lecture, we will see that how to handle the focus states, the hover states and other states within the Tailwind CSS. And these states are most used inside the real world applications because all of the modern applications which has great designs, which has great UI uses these states to build their UI. So let's see that how to handle the hover, focus and other states within the Tailwind CSS. So let's see the first style that we currently have will be the hover. And I think you already know about the hover. So when you point over any UI element, it is known as the hover state. So then the hover states get active and then it will apply the styles which you provide to the hover state. And same with the active as well. So if you have the navigation bar and if you want to style and currently active link, like if you're on the about page, if you want to apply some styles to the about page, which is currently active, then you can just provide some styles to the active and then we have the focus as well. Like if a UI element is currently in the focus, then you can apply some states to the focus as well. And same with the first and the last as well. So if you want to apply some styles to the first or last child of any parent, like suppose we have a div, if you want to apply some styles to that div, like the first and the last child, then you can use the first and last properties with these states. So these are just very few states which are most commonly used within the Tailwind or any other CSS libraries as well. So these are just very few states. So let's directly head over to the Tailwind CSS documentation to see that how to apply these styles within the Tailwind. So I'm into the tailwindcss.com and I'm into the section of the hover, focus and other states. So in this section, you will see that how to handle all of these states. So let's say suppose we have this button and then you can see once I will point over this button, then the hover style would be then applied and how to apply the hover style. We just add the hover like this. We add the hover colon and then this style name. So you can have the hover styles like this. And then you can see you can have the pseudo classes like the hover, you have the focus, first child, required. And there are so many other styles that you can use within the tailwind as well. And you can see how can we use these styles. So suppose you want to apply the hover, focus and active all of these styles inside that. So you can use the normal button. You have the BG violet of the 500. And if you want to apply some hover style, like once you will hover over this button, then the color of the background would change to the 600 shade from the 500. So if you will hover over this, then you can see now the background has been changed with the 500 to the 600. And then you can see once this button would be active, once we click on this button, then you can see now we have the styles of the 700. And then you can see now we have the styles of the 700 once the button is currently active. So that's how the active also works. So now it is currently in the active. And then you can see we have the focus as well. Once this is in focus, then you can see outline has been none. And then you can see inside the focus, there is one more style. Like if you want to apply multiple styles of any element, so you can use multiple definitions like this, like focus, we have the outline none. And with the focus, they have provided the ring. So ring is now adding the ring inside the focus. So now you can see it is currently in the focus. It is currently in the tab focus. So then you can see once I will move out of the focus, once I will click outside. So you can see now we do not have these styles available. So you can see the focus has these colors. Like we have the focus outline none. We are removing the default outline. We are adding the ring inside that. And then the ring has the color of the violet of the 300. So you can see once it is in focus. So that's how these styles work. So let's just see the first and last as well. So you can see now we have here a div. So suppose we have a UL and suppose this is a list item. So for every list item, we have these names and their profiles. So let's see the first child that we have. So inside the first, they have provided the padding top as the zero. And inside the last as well, they have provided the padding bottom as the zero. So this is how they can just define some styles within the Tailwind CSS for the first and the last styles. Like you define the first colon, then the style name, the last colon and the style name. So that's how you can use all of these styles and then you can just head over to the documentation. So there are a lot of things with these states. So you can just learn about them from the Tailwind documentation as well. So now let's just move on and let's just test these values. So if we just open our application, here we have the header, here we have the code. We had just simple header as of now. We have here the navigation tag. We have the SVG for the logo We have the paragraph tag. And then we are rendering all of the list item inside that. And then we can move on into the create next step. So here you can see now we have the services, blocks and the students. And we were building a navigation bar for suppose like educational institute. So let's move on and let's see some of the styles. Like we have the A tag, the anchor tag. If we provide the class names like this, so we can have the class name. And suppose on the hover, we can add the hovers like this. So this is the hover. In the hover, if you want to add some background color, so we can have the background. And then I can give the background like BG slate 700 or 600 as well. 
so if we save if we move on to the application then you can see if i will now just hover over this then you can see now we have some background color inside that so you can see if i just maximize so you can see once i will hover over any of the element so you can see these styles will be then applied and then you can see you can also add some padding as well inside that you can move on into the style like this and then you can have the padding legs padding like that should be somewhere around two would be enough so you can have the padding and then you can add some space so you can see once you will just hover over this element then you can see now you have some background shadow inside that you have the background color and then you can change the colors as well that you want so you can give the colors like this as well like you can give the background gray as well so you can give any color that you want so you can see now inside the hover you have the first state and then if you want to add other things as well inside the hover then you can again use the hover like this so if you want to apply the multiple styles inside the hover then this is not supported as of now so every time you need to apply a styles for the hover you need to add the hover then the style again the hover then the style because this is not currently supported inside the tailwind but maybe they can add the support inside the future versions of the tailwind so for every style that you need to add inside the hover you need to add the hover element like this so you can add the hover and then suppose inside the hover i will add the background as the rounded so like we have the background color so we can add the rounded background color like this so we can have your uh, the uh, rounded so we can have the rounded and we can use the md for the rounded it will be six pixels so if we will save if we'll move on to the application once again so here you can see once i will hover over this then you can see now we have little bit nice effect of the rounded corners so we have the rounded corners of the background and then you can see it is also looking good so we have these styles for the hover and if you want to apply more styles then you can play around with all of these styles that you want so now we have these hovers and suppose we want to apply some styles for the active link then how can we do that so we can use the active and suppose inside the active link i want to do like i want to change the background color once again so for the active we can change the background color and suppose the background color can be we can give the pink color like this or like we can give the purple color like this so that should be purple like suppose 800 or 700 of the purple so if we save if we move on to the application so here you can see once i will click on this link and you can see this link is currently active so then you can see now we are not moving into any other route so the active states get lost so you can see but once we will just click over this element once we continue clicking so you can see now we have the active state inside this button so we can add for this as well we can add for this as well so that's how the active works inside that so if the link will currently be active so we'll be seeing the active like this so that's how we can define the active and then if you want to apply some styles for like the focus so you can use the focus like this and then inside the focus if you want to apply some styles like you want to apply some ring effect again that you saw inside that as well so you can use the ring and inside that again you can use the focus once again so you can use the focus and then you can use the ring color as well so you can have the ring like suppose you have your the green ring like this so you can have the green of 600 so if you will just save if we'll move on to the application once again so you can see once the element will be in the focus so you can see if the element will be in focus like this so then we'll be seeing the ring effect like this so you can have the ring so you can see then we'll be having the ring effect inside that so you can see once we'll move on to the services now we have the ring effect inside that and then you can see it is working perfectly fine and then you can see that's how we can use the ring effects like this so we have the ring color but only if the tab isn't currently in focus so you can see once we'll move on to other tab with the switch as well so here we have the ring here we have the ring and here we have the ring so that's how the ring works inside that so that's how you can apply the ring effects as well like this so you can play around with all of these values like you can see there's one more thing like once we are in the ring so you can see once we move out of the focus then we do not have the rounded corners so for that you can again use the rounded for the focus as well so you can have the focus you can have the rounded we can have the md property so you can see now we have the md property with the rounded as well so you can see once we will switch to the tab like this like this and like this as well so now we have these properties with the ring as well so that's how it works inside that and then you can see we are seeing the outline as well so if you want to remove the outline then you can use again the focus you can use the outline that should be none so if you remove the outline now you have the green color with the outline as well so if you will move on to the block now we have the green outline color same for the students as well so that's how these states works inside the tailwind css so you can play around with all of these values with other states as well so that's it for this lecture so now we are wrapping up with this